This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Rappaport to the rescue with award-winning animal advocate Jill Rappaport. Welcome to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Jill Rappaport. Well, we took a little bit of a break, a little hiatus. It was a summer break, a little into fall. We always had planned to take a little time off, but then I had lost my beloved dog, CJ, who, believe it or not, was 20 years young, never sick a day in her life, but died suddenly in the end of July, and I really needed time off because that made it three of my beloved rescue dogs that I have lost since COVID started. And then I was checking in with Bill Berloni and he has lost multiple dogs during this time too. And the wonderful Bill Berloni now who has been with me on this podcast since we started over a year ago. Bill, I am so happy to be back with you today. We had a little time off, but we needed it, didn't we? We sure did. I mean, so much is going on with the world. And and when you lose a family member, especially one of the fur ones, it takes a little time to get back on even keel. And Bill, you lost several dogs in the last year, didn't you? Well, we lost three as well. But, you know, we have over 20 that live in our house. So there's a little more attrition, you know, with that. But it doesn't get any easier. And when it does get easy to lose a pet, that's the time you shouldn't have pets. Oh, I know. Every time you lose one, it's a physical pain where literally you can feel part of your body and it's obviously our heart goes with them. And there isn't a day that I don't think about all three of them, including all of my multiple pets that I've lost over the years. Something will happen during the day. I'll see something on TV. I'll see something when I'm driving and it will remind me of any one of my beloved animals that I had in my life and the indelible mark they've left on our lives. And I know we were always talking about taking off, you know, August and September. And we started a little bit earlier because after I lost CJ, and again, she was 20 years old, never sick a day in her life, a Havanese who literally had a heart condition. And then the second time walked up the stairs after we knew she had a heart problem. Three weeks later, she passed out and went to heaven. And if I could have that life free of illness and pain and living till 20 years old, I would sign up right now for any of my dogs. But yet, even when she went, it was so horrible and so sad. And I miss her so much. And I know that's how you feel, Bill. And I'm so happy that we were able to regroup and get back on now for Adopt a Shelter Dog Month, because this is what it's all about. October 1 starts this campaign that has been around and reminds people, let's open up our hearts and homes to these animals. And I feel so blessed to have this podcast to work with you, Bill, and to remind people again, if you're thinking about getting an animal, please go to your local shelter. It's so wonderful. And what you get back, you can't put into words. You're absolutely right, Jill, you know, to be able to come back with our show and remind people that there are dogs out there that still need homes, that the problem isn't over, and that we have a mission. We have animals to rescue. And, uh, you know, to bring in our celebrity friends to help us get that message across, I can't think of a better way to spend a half hour. And speaking of celebrity friends, Bill, you are responsible for our next guest, the legendary Linda Lavin, okay? Not only is she a Tony winner, a two-time Golden Globe winner, this woman does not stop. She has a hit show on CBS, Be Positive. I loved her in Alice. I'm really dating myself now, but she is amazing. And she and her husband, Steve, have really made it their life's mission to take care, rescue, adopt, and gloat about the wonderful joys of rescuing a shelter pet. Thanks to you, Bill. There are two great people. You know, the character you see on television is the character she really is in life. You know, inviting us into her home, walked in, a big hug, sit down, let me get you some coffee. You hungry? Here, have some fruit. I mean, she and Steve just took care of us when we went to visit them. And uh, that generosity was overflowing into their pets, which is why I agreed to to help them out because, you know, they had two dogs with some different issues and I wanted to bring them all together as a happy family. 
And you certainly have done that. So cannot wait to hear about that relationship and the connection you have to her. Obviously, Bill, it's a very special one. So when we come back, the one and only Linda Lavin, who will also be joined by her husband, Steve Bakunas, and their rescue angels. Stay tuned. How many of you have pets? My hand's raised. Now think about how lucky you are to have such a sweet little pet in your life. And that pet is lucky to have you too. But unfortunately, there are countless pets out there that don't have a home to call their own. However, Bob's from Skechers is trying to change that. So we developed Bob's for dogs and cats to help pets in need. With every purchase of adorable Bob's footwear or fun, stylish apparel, or even the cutest Bob's pet accessories, Skechers makes a donation to Petco Love to help save shelter pets. And with your help, we've already saved the lives of over 1 million pets and raised over $7 million. So while you're getting style and comfort with features like Skechers' famous memory foam cushioning, you're also helping to save an adorable pet in need and helping another lucky owner be connected with a future best friend and companion because happiness is having a loving pet by your side. Find Bob's at a Skechers store, Skechers.com, select pet co-locations, or wherever stylish footwear is sold. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to Rappaport to the Rescue. I'm Jill Rappaport, joined, of course, with our wonderful Bill Berloni, my partner in crime, and we are so excited to kick off Adopt a Shelter Dog Month, which is October, with the wonderful, legendary Linda Lavin. Linda, we're so happy to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled that you wanted to invite us and that we are connected through Bill. And may I introduce my wonderful husband, Steve Bakunas, who's sitting next Yes, I was about to say you have your better half with you, along with your four-legged fur angel. So tell us, you're there with your husband. We're so happy happy he's part of this podcast because we want to hear all about your wonderful relationship and your fur angels. Well, here we are. We're all ready to go. And the fur angels are in the middle of the floor picking their toys now. So Bill would be very happy with their progress. He he grounded them in early education and we have benefited from Bill's extraordinary knowledge. And so we're happy to be with you. Well, Linda, you've always been a huge animal lover. That I know about you. And um, I go back to being a fan, back to the days of Alice. I mean, I've always adored you. And I had such a laugh the other night seeing the intern again when you gave Robert De Niro the finger during the funeral. The funeral. <laughs> yes. I loved it. You are just hysterical. And now you have this amazing show on CBS, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But let me go back to your love of rescue animals and you and your husband, the bond you have with rescuing, saving and adopting. Why don't you tell us about that? For me, it all began with a dog I met on a tennis court about 40 years ago who walked right up to me (laughs) and said, take me home. And as a child, I had had one dog and uh, I had to beg my family for this dog. The family was not dog friendly or knowledgeable about animals. And in those years, as some of you older people will remember, dogs were allowed to run free. So you got a dog and you didn't have to see it all day. And, you know, families just took it or left it. And we live in such a different time now when the leash law came in. When I moved to New York, and people had dogs and dogs were pooping all over the place. So much civilization has has happened around dogs. When I moved to California after years of living in Portland, Maine, where I grew up, having my little dog, Spotty, who ran away from the world of mirth. He was a circus dog and he was given to us and he was a nightmare. But, oh, God, I loved him. And <laughs> And uh, he ran away all the time. So my history with dogs is not educated and not knowledgeable. And I grew up and I moved to California to go to work on Alice. And I was on this tennis court and this wonderful mixed dog came up to me. It had a Rhodesian Ridgeback mix in it. And she was lovely. And I took her home and she immediately ran away. And this went on and on and on. She'd come back and run away. So she was my first rescue in a way. I didn't work through an agency. Clearly, I just picked her up. 
little by little, she learned and I learned my responsibility to her. And I named her Lovey. And then I got another dog, not a rescue. And she was a golden retriever and I named her Sweetie. So I had Lovey and Sweetie and I was living in the, in the Palisades and then in Malibu. And then another dog came and found us. And I called the owner and he didn't want the dog back. So I named her and we kept her. She was my first Daisy. The dog that Steve and I have now, one of the two, is named Daisy. Little by little, I learned. Then years later, I adopted a Rottweiler. And um, boy, that was, that was important in my life. And then I met Steve. And the Rottweiler's name was Roxy. And Steve and Roxy fell in love, as did Steve and I. And we became a family. That is so wonderful. And Steve, you know, there's really something about bonding over animals together. You know, Linda, you met Steve later in life. He's your second husband. And the bond there, the love of these animals. He's my third husband. So, the, and third oh, time okay, but time. who's counting? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did meet him a little bit later in life. Yep. And the bond of the animals, let's talk about that. Steve, you know, Linda, there's a whole lot to love there about her, just meeting her, her talent, everything about her. But what was it about the connection of animals between the two of you? Well, I didn't have children in my life myself. You know, I knew children, but didn't know them. And uh, when I met Linda, she had Roxy. And to me, Roxy was, it was Linda and Roxy. It was her child. It was her her mate. And uh, so bringing Roxy into the mix, you know, being a part of, you know, learning her relationship with Roxy, developing my own. And uh, and it was nice because it, it certainly it was something to bond together. We cared about her when things would happen or if it was my turn to pick up the poop, you know, whatever. We it was a part of our life and uh, it was good. It was she, good. She was mature when she met Steve and Steve and I were married five years later after we met. And Roxy was about 12 and she'd gotten sick. And I would take her to Raleigh. We lived in Wilmington, North Carolina. I, took, I took her to the hospital a few times. She was very sick. I would have to leave to go to work and Steve would pick her up. She would be in pain and Steve would pick her up. Roxy was about 80 pounds. And he'd just carry her across whatever street she couldn't walk across. And Steve really took care of Roxy the way I had been taking care of her all those years. I had her trained by a trainer in North Carolina. Who, who trained bird dogs. And he taught me that this dog would protect me in Central Park at three o'clock in the morning. He said, all you have to do. <laughs> well, wait a minute. What would you be doing at Central Park at three in the morning? Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Some things don't get discussed. <laughs> but, you know, she was my guard dog and she was my, my soulmate. She was, as Steve said, my mate. And then we became a family. And I'll just end the story of Roxy and get on to adopting with this. Steve and I got married on Valentine's Day in 2005. Roxy took a picture with us that morning. We went off to get married at noon. When we came back, after we'd had our pictures taken with her in the house, and she had a, a scarf around her neck all dressed up for the wedding, she said to me, okay, you're married, I'm going now. And she died the next morning. She started to die. Oh, night, my goodness. And she left. She had a stroke. She was wandering the house. And it was an amazing, miraculous event that makes me believe how important that bond is. I know that she stayed around for the wedding. She stayed around to make sure that Steve was going to stay <laughs> and that I was OK. And the next day we gave her her freedom. And you know, you never get over the loss of uh, a dog uh, as you don't a person. You grieve, you move on. But it took a couple of years. And I said to Steve one day, I'm talking to the kitchen floor now. I need another dog. When I start talking to tiles on the floor, I know I'm in trouble. And I do. I, I talk all day long to our dogs. And so when there's not one there, I make it up. And so we got another Rottweiler and she didn't make it. She was not well. She was overbred. And that was two years that we had uh, Stella. And we were creating and running our own theater in Wilmington, North Carolina then. And then one day, and Steve said, I don't think I can go through this again. It was, it was deeply distressing to lose uh, two dogs in two years. And because we were attached and we named uh, the theater a part of the theater after Stella. I mean, <laughs> it's a deep bond. 
It's a beautiful story. Two years later, I said, well, I've been going to the shelter in Wilmington. I I didn't want to tell him. I felt like I was having an affair. I was sneaking around going to shelters, looking for a dog. (laughs) And one day I just said, I love it. Look, truth is, I've been sneaking around and I've been looking for dogs and they're all big black labs and they're crazy. And I don't want one of those. But will you go into the shelter with me? They said to keep coming back. And that morning, April 11th, in 2011. No, no, earlier than that. But I know it was April 11th. We walked into the uh, shelter in Wilmington, North Carolina, and there was Mickey, a little Jack Beagle mix. And he was sitting very quietly among all those crazy dogs. And you know what? Your dog's barking because mine's barking in the background. Oh, maybe that's oh, it. And you found that. Oh, you're right. Isn't that yeah. funny? Now they're all barking in unison. What a beautiful yeah, thing. Right. Well, I love it. going to run around and look for it. That was our first shelter dog was Mickey. So it's 12 years. So 12 years until last September, well, how 12 years ago, Mickey got me through the pandemic and I took care of him. He had a liver cancer and we had 12 fantastic years with this dog who only wanted to be with us. He didn't need any training. He had been with people. He had run away from them. And we rescued him. And all he needed was a bed in every room of the house. And he would stand still and wait for directions. And you would just say, you can lie down now. And he'd say, okay, I didn't know for sure. And then he would lie down. Or if you said W-A-L-K, that's all you had to say was once. He could walk for miles. They're amazing. They are. Oh, the comfort and the love they bring us. There is no words to describe that. And Bill, Bill Berloni, that is how we made the connection today with Linda Lavin. Bill, tell us about your relationship, how you came to Linda through rescue. Actually, I got a call from Bernadette Peters. She said, a friend of mine just adopted two dogs. Do you think you might be able to help them with some training? And I said, well, sure. I'm not, I'm not too busy. And um, she said, well, it's Linda Lavin. And I said, well, is she good with dogs? I mean, I didn't care who it is, but are they, if they're good with dogs. So we exchanged phone numbers. We had a phone conversation and um, I went up to meet Linda and Steve. And I got to hear all these stories in first person, but I was actually seeing how they were with their dogs before I decided if I could really help them. So it was through their recent adoptions with the help of Bernadette Peters that we met. And you know, Linda, I also am just a, uh, as I like to call them, a four-legged fur angel parent. I had six rescues, and when COVID started, and since COVID started, I sadly have lost three. I'm down to three. It's so funny, you know, you talk about having three dogs, and people think, wow, that's a lot. I feel like it's so quiet with the three because I had six a year and a half ago. And I know what these dogs have meant to me through COVID, loneliness, loss. I mean, they are my soulmates and the unconditional love. You can't even put into words what really that means because the support and the attention and the comfort they give you, there are no words for it. You know, you're absolutely right. When I was stuck in the uh, epicenter in New York City with Mickey, and I had flown Mickey back on, uh, from Los Angeles, where we'd been living for a few years, Mickey was a wonderful traveler. He spoiled us. We have two fabulous dogs now who are Daisy and Max, and we're sitting in the same room with them now. And amazingly, they are playing with and quiet and enjoying life, playing with their toys. And that has taken the work that Bill has taught us But when we found these dogs, I just want to talk about that. As you talk about the loneliness and the isolation of the pandemic, you know, our dogs got to know us better than ever because we, no one was going anywhere. We were all home. And Mickey would look at me like, you're still here? You know, it was used to me not being. And there were were the moments where I would go out to, to the grocery store. That was upsetting because they were so used to us being there 24 hours. And that was the break from isolation, to have each other, to be together. There's nothing like it. And we wanted it again. And so we started talking about adopting. Bernadette asked me if I would come to Broadway Barks and bring Mickey. And I said, Mickey's passed, but I certainly would like to your help with, if you could help me, I'd started looking. And so she connected us with the Westchester SPCA. And Steve and I talked about maybe getting two dogs. At, and when you talk about having multiple dogs so that they could keep each other company and would we be all right with that? You know, we travel and we 
We like to go places. We're adventurers. Should we do this? Is it okay? Is it better to have two than one? So <laughs> we went to uh, the, the shelter and uh, I saw Daisy. She had a different name then. And they said, she's not good with other dogs. So I said, well, that's, that's going to be a problem because we're thinking of two. And by the way, where is Steve? And they said, oh, he's gone into the building. And I walked into the building and there was Steve who had said, I don't think I can do this. I'm not sure I can fall in love with another dog, but let's holding a dog the size of, well, he was about 35 pounds then. And I looked at Steve who was (laughs) cradling this great big goofy puppy who was part shepherd, part lab, part hound. And I said to Steve, who are you? What are you doing? And he said, I'm in love. And we put both (laughs) into an outdoor uh, yard. And Daisy immediately became his little mother. And he let her be. And they played together. And we, we said, we'll take them both. And we came back the next day. And they've been ours ever since. So, you know, the moral of this story is, You don't have to make a big decision before you go over and and find someone that you'll connect to or fall in love with or just can't live without. That's what happened for us. It's so true. And, you know, I feel like it's just me and my pooches, but I know that friends of mine, their relationships, when you have that bond, that strong connection, Steve, and I'm sure you agree with this, it just makes you that much closer. Don't you agree? Indeed. And helps you get through the tough stuff. I mean, it makes you realize, like, you know, when you have that family, the comforting family of these rescue dogs, and I always say, and Bill, you'll be the first to admit this, too, they know that they've been saved. They know when they're in the arms of the right loving family. And it's just an amazing bond that develops that you can't even put into words. Right, Bill? Yes, absolutely. When I met Linda and Steve, they had enough dog experience to train a dog, but they had adopted two such opposite characters, a mature little terrier, you know, and a big giant puppy. So they just needed some help in getting them together. So getting back to that, you know, the training we do, they have to do the same training together. They have to work with the dogs and that in and of itself is an activity that's wonderful. Everybody working with the dogs together. The fact that we're all a little bit older, you know, when you have these big dogs and the energy it takes and walking them. And Linda, your career, I mean, you just don't stop. And I know you have a birthday coming up next week. And that's so exciting. Tell me about that. You know, your life, your career, you never stop. You've got the animals. I want to talk to you about that because you are just filled with vim and vigor, girl. (laughs) I want some of that. (laughs) I just woke up from a nap. Thank you. I'm also an insomniac. (laughs) Well, now you're on this amazing show, Be Positive, on CBS. And I know you have a movie in the works. What do you attribute, you know, your energy, your zest for life to? Tell me about that. You know, I don't know what to attribute it to. I, I inherited some fabulous genes and I have a great zest for living. And I I love my life. I love Steve. I love our adventurous life. I like evenings at home, quiet ones. I like order. I work very hard on my life in trying to uh, understand what I can control and what I cannot. So one of the things I love about having animals is once in a while, I can control something. (laughs) I can put them in a crate. (laughs) I can give them a timeout as Bill Berloni has taught us, you know. You ask once, you ask twice, they don't do it. They go in a crate for a timeout. And I remember saying to Bill, uh, let me just talk about Bill Berloni for a minute, who, by the way, is world-renowned. You, you mentioned his name on a Hollywood set on which I work every day out here. Everybody knows Bill. When I first spoke with Bill on the phone and he said, describe the dogs to me, he knew within the first half hour, he said, with Daisy, we're going to have to go really slowly. He knew that she was very different. And just from what I had told him before he even laid eyes on her, his instinct and his expertise mixed to make him the most compassionate, knowledgeable person of of animals that I've ever known. And then he came to the house with his assistant, Kelly, and we talked for at least an hour before he even greeted the dogs. And uh, he interviewed us. He interviewed us. 
You know, the thing about Bill, Linda, and Steve, I was interested in a dog a while back, and he said, nope, it won't work in your pack. Bill doesn't care who you are, what you do for a living. It's all about the perfect match, because let's be honest, if he doesn't make the right match, that dog could end up back in the shelter system. So Bill's first and foremost commitment is to the animal and the welfare of that animal, and he does his best to make the most perfect match so that it's a lifelong match. You know, Bill said to me and to Steve, you know, I train dogs to perform. I want them to want to get on the stage, not to have to get out there. And then I get the actors to work with them. And that's what he's done for us, is that we have a language now with these dogs. They understand because it comes from repetition and it comes from patience and it comes from over and over every day. And, you know, I know Bill will be happy when I say to Daisy, do you want to work? She jumps up. And you taught me that, Bill, and Kelly, too. And we put the, the collar on her and come into the living room. She knows the word. And she knows we're going to train and she's going to get little cookies and she's going to sit and stay and go down and walk and sit. And the repetition is thrilling for both of us. And I have learned patience from having these dogs and these animals more than I ever did from having children. I think I might have done better with children if Bill Berloni had been in my life (laughs) early on. (laughs) Bill, Bill, this is like a love fest for you. You're blushing away there, aren't you, Bill? Yes, I am. You're all so kind. You're all so kind. But it's our connection with animals that connects us, you know, that humanity, that caring, that love. I'm so lucky to be in the company of you guys. We feel the same. We totally feel the same way. And it's very interesting what Linda said. You know, Bill, you could have a whole other career training children. (laughs) Because I'm telling you, it's the basic premises of love, respect, listening, kindness. I mean, come on. And let's be honest, Linda, we've seen some animals that are much better trained than some children act, right? Yes. (laughs) Yes. Absolutely. Amen to that. People meet our daughter, Jenna, and she's a beautiful young woman, polite, smart, hardworking. And people say, God, what what a good kid she is. And and we're like, yeah, she had two animal trainers (laughs) as parents. She didn't have a chance. That's very funny. So when you say sit, Jenna sits. <laughs> got one chance. And I was like, then what's the consequence if you don't do it? You know. I want to say this about Bill when he said that that's a timeout. They go in the crate now. And I said, but isn't that a, a punishing place? And he said, that's their, where do you send a kid for a timeout? To their room. That's their safe place. And, you know, it's taken time, but wow. That dog, Bill, he goes right in that crate before I feed Daisy. I do the morning and Steve does the evening. All you have to say is the word crate now. And he goes, I know, I know, I'm going. And he goes in his crate (laughs) and he waits and he cries a little bit because she's getting fed first. What Bill has taught us is that Daisy is... The alpha dog, she's little. She's only 20 pounds. He's about 50 pounds now. How do you do, Bill? And still not finished, probably. <laughs> and uh, and so he waits. And then we feed him. And they eat separately. But this was a nightmare when we first got them, Jill. We needed Bill. We needed Bill and Dorothy and Kelly. We needed them to take the dogs and give us the break of their on educating them. And he would send videos once in a while and he would say, I'm teaching them to listen. And the listen, the word was in quotes. That's the thing he said that you will have to keep doing is to get them to listen to you. And you know what? It's working and it ain't magic. It's hard work, but it feels like magic when it works. It's so exciting. And we feel that we're in a state of grace with these dogs. And how about getting them from a shelter where where the foster parents said, oh, she's not good with dogs. She picks out his toys like a woman picks out a man's ties in the morning. <laughs> she lays them all out. I love that. She she's, she's wonderful. And uh, we're, we're very lucky. It's such a wonderful story of love and commitment, and especially for this special month, which is Adopt-A-Shelter Dog Month, we want to always encourage people to open up their hearts and homes to animals in need, but especially this month. You know, this is really the time to really think about doing this, and as we all know, it's the best gift you not only give them, but we give to ourselves. And Linda, on a final note, we talked about your energy, your career, this Be Positive. Wow, what a great show. Any 
anything in store? Any surprises? Oh, yeah. What's going on in your life career-wise that we need to know? Give us a little tease. So Be Positive premieres on CBS at 9.30 on October 14th, the night before my birthday. And it a wonderful show. It's expanded. It takes place now in a retirement home of which I am a resident. I am a regular on the show this season. And then I have a movie coming out around the holidays, the Christmas holidays called Being the Ricardos, directed and written by uh, Aaron Sorkin. He is amazing. What an incredible opportunity for you to be able to work with him. That sounds like it's going to be an amazing film. It's going to be an amazing film. And I was very, very happy to work with him. Let me say one thing before we end about adopting. These two yeah. dogs are in harmony and they are content and they are happy and they are willing to learn and they are saved as we all have been at some point in life from a difficult situation. And as you said earlier, they know it somewhere in their spirit. And even if they don't know it, they are in a better place because we've come along. The SPCAs all over the world are taking dogs out of high kill shelters, which is what Daisy survived. And Max was a baby. But what, what you inherit when you rescue a dog is the past that they have come from. And you get to give them a new present and a great future. And you give yourself a great fun life. We laugh a lot because of these dogs. And I just want to offer that up to people who are thinking about it. Well, let me tell you, that is a beautiful way to end this show in honor of Adopt a Shelter Dog Month. And Bill Berloni, great job making the match of Linda and Steve's lifetime. This is a beautiful story. And again, we are so thrilled that you can share this with our listeners because it is so important to do. And once people do it, they can't believe they hadn't done it before. So Linda, Steve, thank you so much. Continued love, success. You've got everything going going for you and all the blessings in the world that you deserve. Thank and we're you, so girl. thrilled that you were able to be part of Rappaport to the rescue. Well, aren't you wonderful? You are a great interviewer. And by the way, Bill Berloni is the hero of this entire story. We are indebted to him. We just love him and he deserves everything, every accolade, every recommendation. He has made our life really special. So thanks for including And so many other people. And Bernadette Peters. Yep. Find the rescues and bring them home. Yes. And listen, I wish you all the best. We will catch up with you again. We love to follow up with our guests and see how the animals are doing months down the road and new milestones in their life and your life. So we will be checking back in with you. Please do. Please do. We'll always have new fun things to tell you about these guys, I'm sure. Oh, well, thank you, Linda, Steve, and Bill Berloni. Thank you, Bill. Love you so much. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, everybody. A lot of love fest going on here. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.